WrestleMania, and Triple H just kind of laughed at him. He said, you know, we had this conversation before. I only work with A-plus superstars. You know, until then, you know, I'll find a place for you on the card, which we know okay, eventually. Uh, yeah. I think we do have maybe a guest. Uh, party, you are on King Jordan Radio. Can you introduce yourself? Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? Is this the uh, former Intercontinental Champion of all time? The greatest Intercontinental? No, I'm not not former. I'm the greatest WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only, the Honky Tonk Man live here on King Jordan Radio. How are you? Come on, buddy? give it come on, come on, come on. Give him give me some applause. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, let me hear something. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Oh, oh gee. yeah, all right, all right, all right. That, okay, that's enough. Listen, that, that's enough now. That's that's good. Okay. okay Shake roll, and roll, baby. You're on the Boy, phone. Boy, can't you let anybody do this show. <laughs> well, yeah, you're you know, it, that, I was when, it comes say, to pod, the, when it comes to when it, when it comes to podcasts, you can let anybody do anything. Is that what's That's going right. on now? You're on the phone with Chicago Sun Times on Blackjack Brown. Blackjack Black Brown. Blackjack Brown. <laughs> My man. Man, oh man, oh man! What a name from the past. I mean, I'm talking about Blackjack Great Brown, hair. baby. He, Blackjack <laughs> Brown had the ghetto. He had the ghetto gloves before anybody had them. Yeah. <laughs> he had to he had to get old black he had to get old blaster a long time before Bad News Brown. Most definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're on the uh line with uh, my partner crime, double J, J J. Say hello, J J. Honky Tonk Man is definitely a pleasure to talk to one of the longest reigning intercontinental champions of all time. Uh, now, definitely a pleasure, now, my man. Now, now, I don't mean to cut you off, but you said one of the longest. It's not one of; it is the longest. Absolutely. Six don't add points. any don't add any adjectives in there. Just get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now you will be the main attraction. Uh, I should say, along with Dirty Dennis Rodman, Harley Race, Mr. King Kong Bundy, on a March the 8th uh, at the, for the big event. They can go to bigeventnewyork.com, and you're going to shake, rattle, and roll there. So, yes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. First of all, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, King Harley Race again because – uh, I mean, there's not a there's not a legend any bigger than King Harley Race, and and uh, what a first class gentleman he is. And obviously, uh, you have King Kong Bundy, who the WWE who has never called back again. And I want to ask him, just what did you do, Bundy? What did you do? Yeah, and I got now with De- with, you. Well, now with De- now with Dennis Robbins, a whole different story because uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, he he's not from our world. Dennis is from another planet. Yeah. Yes. He, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis is, yeah, Den, Dennis is not from this universe. But anyway, it'll be good to see him, and I hope he's doing okay. <laughs> All right, let's start off with this. The uh, Hall of Fame induction opens up with a guy you feuded with time in and time out in the 80s and the early 90s. I'm talking about Jim, Hay- Jim Helwig, the ultimate warrior. Give me your honest opinion of the ultimate warrior. Uh, I think he's very deserving of going in the Hall of Fame. I mean, if you can if you can put uh Pete Rose and a limo driver and then and, and, uh people of of that, I mean, come on now. I mean, I don't mind I, you know, I really don't mind it in at what they do because uh it's 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 strictly entertainment and it's fun for the fans and it's it's a great honor for the wrestlers to be inducted and and I had a a, a really pleasure to induct Coco uh, Beware the Birdman back in uh, Houston several years ago and and it was a great event and and the guys that get inducted they're very humble they, they all they are all very deserving and uh, Jake the Snake what's your take on him well. Getting to the whole thing. Uh, you know, uh, 
I, I, to me personally, my take is uh, I'm glad Jake's going in. He's well deserving also. But to pander, to pander for the last six or eight months about it, and then get it is like, come on, did, did the WWE knuckle under or what? Uh, maybe I should. Maybe Black Jack Brown should start pandering for the honky tonk man. But no, I mean, I mean, Jake, Jake is well deserving also. Uh, so don't let's don't look at the negative side of it as anything other than it's positive for Jake. Okay, there's also talk of Scott Hall. He hasn't been announced yet, and Paul Bearer. Uh, I, you know, Paul Bearer, I think is. Uh, and should be announced, and, and if he's the last one they announce, it's deserving that he would be the last one with a big send-off. What a fabulous guy, and I, I was talking to him uh, three days before all this, this tragedy happened for him, and I was down in Pensacola talking to Don Fargo and, and, and several guys on the weekend this past weekend, uh, legends from the Southeastern Championship Wrestling down in Pensacola and Mobile, and... and uh, Paul Bear was fine at the uh, reunion last year. He was absolutely perfect, and he had been a little bit sick, and then uh, they took him to the hospital on the Sunday night after the uh, uh, Gulf Coast reunion, and then on Tuesday uh, it was uh, he, he didn't do very well. He had he had a chest infection. Okay, uh, JJ, uh, I want to go to you to, to the next question for Mr. Honky Tonk Man. Yeah, I mean, what could you tell me about uh, when you won the Intercontinental title? You mentioned you are the longest reigning Intercontinental champion of all time when you first won the championship against, you know, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. You know, what was it like going into that? Did you have any idea that you would have been champion for so long? Uh, no, that was no, no, no. You never – I don't think anyone – and, and uh, if you ask Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold or you ask uh, – John Cena or any 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 anyone that said uh, you can ask Bill Gates and say you know what do you think made it happen? No one. I mean, none of us we really know. It's it's something that did happen. Uh, you know, people say Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was a great Intercontinental Champion. He, well, by all accounts, he held the belt for probably about eight, nine, ten, maybe nine weeks. He won it at WrestleMania March 28th and lost it on June. What sixth or seventh? Yes, about now. I'm not, now, now I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about Steamboat, but he did say he hated to lose the belt to an Elvis impersonator, and so my comeback on that was, well, had you rather lose it to a piper who blows a bag pipes and wears a skirt, or had you rather lose it to a, a snake man, or had you rather lose it to a? Uh, a natural Butch Reed, or had you rather loot? I mean, come on, man. I, I, you know, I like that thing on Fox. I, I like that thing on Fox Sports where Mike Dick and them guys go, "Come on, man." No, it's <laughs> CBS or somewhere. It's not Fox. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got the wrong station. But it's like, come on, man. <laughs> come on, well, Blackjack. Hockey, come, Blackjack. Come on, Blackjack. Give me a come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, that's it, Daddy. <laughs> Blackjack Brown, fabulous, unbelievable. What a t- Blackjack, Blackjack. Yeah. Yeah, let me give you a name. Let me give you a name from the past. Tom Casati. Ah, well, I, I last heard he was in uh, Vegas somewhere. Yeah, whatever happened to the Penguin? Somewhere in Vegas, I'm, I'm hearing. That's the last I heard about <laughs> him. Probably like last year. Uh, now let me ask you this. Now, Blackjack, you're you're you a uh, historian of Madison Square Garden. Exactly. Did, did the honk Did the honky tonk man sell out Madison Square Garden on a two week notice with Bruno Sammartino? No. Yes, I did. You know, I did because Jake went Jake went to rehab, and, and they had to bring in somebody, and with about a two or three week well, okay, I'll say three weeks, three week notice. Uh, no, actually, that was Boston. I'm sorry, Blackjack. Okay. Did the Honky Tonk Man sell out the garden against Bruno? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Did I sell out Philadelphia against Bruno? Yes. And Boston? Uh, as far as I can remember, you did. Absolutely. Thank you, Blackjack. See, you're oh, a historian. You, you, come on, just say it. Yeah, I'll, I'll you did. Come, like come on, man. i tell it Come on, man. Come on, man. I'll tell it like it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm... I'm, 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 I'm I saw you I on the what, video. I, 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 hold on, Blackjack. I saw you on the video with uh, 
New Jack and the Iron Sheik. Uh, oh, please, 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 listen, listen, listen. There's there's some things that need to be like sleeping lions. Leave them alone, okay? Yeah. Let's let's put this let's put this one back in the archives and and hopefully it'll resurface <laughs> in about fifty years from now. <laughs> but no, that, I mean, I mean, uh, to be with New Jack and the Iron Sheik was fabulous, and I enjoyed every minute of it until the police came. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, that was well, de- and, and, and you know, I'm not going to say I wasn't wrong either. I was, it was well deserving that the police came because we were uh, extremely inebriated and uh, doing things we should not be doing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, what's your thoughts on Viscera passing away only at 43? I think you worked uh, with him. Mason. You know, I, I, I met that young fellow, and I say young fellow because both of them came into, and I was working part-time for Jerry Jarrett, and I think I was in some little small town in Arkansas. I had left the WWE, and they, they came into the locker room, just young green kids. And, and he was so big and impressive and and I told them, uh, they said, you know, we might have a shot going to WWE. And about two weeks later, they did. And I said, enjoy it. I think you guys will do great there. And I never saw him again. I never ran across him again. But, you know, he had gotten extremely, extremely heavy. And, and that's what happens to some of us when we, when we uh, you know, when you're not doing this every day of your life, you tend to get lethargic and, and, and your body changes. Yeah, no question about it. No question about it. JJ, it's your turn. Next question for Mr. Honky Tong, man. Uh, back in 2008, you made a special guest appearance with Ring of Honor. Uh, what was your relationship with Ring of Honor like uh, then? Uh, you know, I, 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 really, I didn't. I, I did not have one with them. Uh, I, I was in Chicago at the time. We were doing a Comic Con or something, I think. Myself and Luke Bushwacker, and of course, Luke. Uh, you know, he was friends with uh, Gabe. And uh, he, they, they said yes, you guys, if you want to come over. So we went over to, uh, over, to, I think it was Chicago Heights, outside of Chicago, and just did a little appearance there. And it was fun; it was great. And to see those guys that were in the locker room, uh, and now see that several of them are big, big stars, it, it's really great. They, they do have a good product. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, I think personally, their product is is much better than the TNA product. And uh, obviously the guys that come out of Ring of Honor are much, much better than some of the guys that are down in TNA. But, all you know, all these young fellows, it's a sad thing that uh, these other companies cannot get. I mean, it's like, come on, man, can't you guys get with it? You know, uh, TNA is behind the eight ball on over $100 million, probably lost money. But you can't produce a product that's any good. Like ECW, it, like it, has, it has not, it has, but it has nothing to do with the talent. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's like a reflection. It's like WCW all over again. But Ring of Honor has Ring of Honor is doing just as good or better with a lot less money. Mm. Yeah, what do you attribute that to? Well, I think um, the the Ring of the people that do the Ring of Honor understand uh, their fan base. And I think the TNA people, for some reason, have never understood their fan base. And That's you don't, they don't. They, they, the WWE has a, a fan base that's totally different from TNA. From uh, it was totally different from WCW uh, fan base. It's totally different from Ring of Honor. The WWE had a fan base that was absolutely totally different from the old ECW fan base. And, and I think if you're going to do this, you need to understand your fan base. And, of course, keep Eric – now, let me say it, and I gave him the nickname, and, and I've even heard uh, uh, Kurt Angle call him this, and, of course, Steiner, too, bitch off. Keep people like bitch off out of there, and, and, and your company will do better. But, uh, did you ever work for Mr. Bitch Off? Oh yes, I was there for. I, I, let me tell you this, and uh, I think Blackjack, you'll under you 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 will you will like this. You get you will say, "Come on, man!" I, I was I was there. I, someone said, "Do you remember that song you had in WCW?" And I said, "No, I don't, because I wasn't there long enough to learn the words." Wow! Come on, man! Come on, man! Come on, man! Don't be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's true. I wasn't there long enough to learn the words of that dead gum song. 
<laughs> Your feelings on Eric Sims. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Don't it, Why would you mention Eric Sims when I'm on your show? <laughs> ESS, no BS. E, yeah, come on. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, Bla- give me, give me another one. Come, Come on, Black on, Jack, man. you can do it. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Tonky, you did you uh, get a chance to look at the WWE Network, or you don't care about no. that? Uh, no, I haven't. I know. Uh, you know, I, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, e- even though I'm on, I'm not on a Legends contract. I'm on their Nostalgia contract, which is totally different. Uh, I, I don't look at the product at all. I don't look at TNA. I don't look at Ring of Honor. I read the Internet reports. I, I look at the Internet uh, news uh, places on a daily basis to catch up on what's going on. But to sit down and watch a complete wrestling show, I probably have not done that in 20 years. Uh, there's just nothing that interests me to sit and watch every match, every hour of the day. No, I totally agree. But now, the now, with the w- is, now I, I, let me go yeah. on the record and say this. With, with the WWE Network, I really think yeah. it's a fantastic, a great idea. They have all right. the footage. They have all, the, they have all these uh, the catalogs, the libraries from all the old territories. And uh, TNA, take notice, you're next. <laughs> Vince is going Vince is, Vince is to buy their catalog, and he's going to own that. But... Uh, it's a, it's a really it's a great concept. It's fabulous, and I think to the to the wrestling fans that buy it, they will enjoy it. I think it will be great for them. Yeah, uh, you could actually get a free uh, you know trial, but I uh, heard that you have to pay uh, six months in advance after, so it's sort of like a trick for uh, nine ninety five free trial week. But uh, we'll, see uh, well how you know, works. I mean it. I, it's supply and demand, and WWE is very they're, – they're very good about how they promote and how they uh, launch and do their, their projects. And uh, you, can't, you can't say anything bad about them because, listen, they're a Fortune 500 company that took wrestling from carnivals and sideshows and uh, little buildings up in Rhode Island and, and off the coast of uh, – uh, 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 Bangor, Maine, and places like that, and they put it in huge major arenas that's as big or bigger than the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Okay, Blackjack, let's go over to you for the next question for the Honky Talk Man. Okay, another name from the past, Lonnie Hanover. Have you seen Lonnie? No, I haven't, but I I, I did get a Christmas card email oh. from Lonnie, and I haven't I haven't talked or seen Lonnie in. Oh gosh, he he went to work for another company, uh, and I, I I briefly talked to him about five years ago on the phone, and that's been it. I'll send him your regards. I'll be seeing him in, in March. Well, good, and you know I never get to see George and Palatano or or, uh, or those guys, and and I'm sure that I, I'm sure that Bill After will be showing up over at the at the uh, New Orleans. No, he'll be. Uh, oh, he'll probably be March over. Oh, that's oh right. yes, he, he'll probably be there March eighth, and maybe I get to see George. He'll show up, and you know, uh, Black Jack, that's your neighborhood, or or have no. you moved out of there? No, I'm I'm in Michigan right now. Michigan. Yes. Man, they don't need you over there. Come on, man. You ain't kidding. They need something here. <laughs> they need, they need uh, something over here. I don't know what's going on here. Crazy. Anyway, anyway, Black Jack, can you can you uh, tell the fans that's listening right now? And I and I know uh, when I go back and sometimes I look at it, which is not too often, but when I lost the belt to the Ultimate Warrior, mm-hmm. I don't know that there has been a louder response from anything that happened in Madison Square Garden than that night at that point in time. You are correct. You are correct. Uh, it, if the fan, if the fans go back and they All listen the stuff to is it, documented though, you know, you, if they with the with the YouTube, that's on there. You know what I love about YouTube? I can go back now and see my old matches from yeah, when that's I what's first. On there. When I first started, I can go see matches. I, I can watch people like Jack Briscoe, Harley Race, Dory Funk, 
uh, Junior and then Terry Funk and and then all all those legends. Bruno, I can see those people now that I only got to see when I was a young kid as a wrestling fan in the magazines. Yeah. Honky, and, uh, I, and there, there again, that's why I like the the WWE Network is is for the real wrestling fan. They are going to see nostalgia and history now. Honky, uh, there were rumors back uh, in the nineties that you were going to uh, manage the Disco Inferno. Uh, I think Vince Russo started those rumors. Is there any truth to it? Uh, well, if Vince Russo started a rumor, yes. I, I never gave Vince I never gave Vince Russo a name. Uh, uh, like I did, bitch off. I, I, I don't know what I could have called Russo. I mean, Jimmy Cornette's probably called him everything in the book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, n- no, Vince, no, Vince Russo, and uh, D- no, Disco Inferno was never part of the, never considered. N- nice kid, I met him and I liked him, and you know, very talented kid. But uh, I think he loves to put card games on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> Say it, Black Jack. Come on, man! Oh, come on, man! <laughs> Hockey, well, what's the relationship uh, with uh, Jerry the King Lawler, cousin? Uh, you know, we haven't talked to each other. I haven't seen Jerry in over two years now, and we were at some comic cons together, and and he sat across from me doing his thing, and I did mine, and. Uh, it's that's not any different. I mean, you know, hey, look, it's business. It's not personal. Right. There, there's nothing ever personal in this, in this business. And when you start to take something personal in the in professional sports or or entertainment, and I'll say that both pro, pro sports and entertainment kind of parallel each other. When you start to think that something's personal, it's time for you to stay home. Yeah. Yeah. JJ, let's go listen, to you. Listen, what listen, what if what if Vince took everything personal against all the guys that had done something personally against him that he didn't like, would Hogan be back? Exactly. Oh, oh right. come on man. Come on, man. Look at the come situation on, man. with, 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 with Bruno. All right, JJ, Nobody let's ever thought Bruno you. would be back. Absolutely. That's... Look at Bruno. Come on, man. <laughs> so it's not personal. It's never personal. And and that's the beauty about Vince, and I've got to say that. And I, I've never said anything uh, bad about that that fellow because, I mean, I did not. Sometimes I didn't agree with his business decisions, but on a personal level, level he never took it personally. It was business first, and uh, that's how. I mean, that's how it is. Yeah. Okay, let's try JJ again. JJ, it's your turn. You know, I, I remember, you know, watching your career in the World Wrestling Federation, but a lot of the stuff before that, which I wasn't very familiar with, like uh, what was your, your take when you were in Stampede Wrestling, and do you have any stories about Stu Hart? Oh, well, I, I think I was probably the last person that uh, was in the ring with Stu. Oh, wow. uh, we had a match, my, myself and my partner, and I think that was the last match that he had, the fabulous John Foley, the English fellow, that was the original British Bulldog. John Foley and I wrestled Stu and uh, one of Stu's sons, Keith Hart, and uh, I think that was probably the last match that Stu was ever in. And I, I can't say enough about the honesty and the integrity and uh, those things about Stu. Uh, he was every he was everything that that we always grew up thinking that a promoter should be. Although we had gone through our careers finding out that sometimes promoters aren't what we thought they should be, but Stu was, he was the one that was the stand-up, straight-up guy. And, 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 you know, the same way was uh, Vince's father was that way, and I, I was never around him, but I've heard stories. Listen, when you have 20, 30 people tell you that someone is a good guy or he's a, let's say it this way, a good fellow, not like the movie now, but he's a good fellow, then mm-hmm. he's a good fellow. And and even with uh, with with Vince Jr., Vince Jr. is a good fellow. Uh, he's caught up in, uh, in having to deal with a hundred different personalities, a multi-million yeah. dollar company, and it's not, it's not an easy thing for anyone to do. And, and Stu was... Uh, Stu stands out as the guy that uh, that I truly, truly enjoyed being around. 
uh, hockey, uh, back in your days, you had Jimmy Hart, you had Slick, you had Paul Berra, you had all these number one managers. What did you think about the, the uh, era with the managers and compare it to now with practically no managers besides Mr. Paul Heyman? It's it's such a lost art. I mean, uh, it's such a lost part of the programming, and where it where it got taken away or who took it away, I don't know. And uh, you know, to see a guy like uh, Captain Lou and to see Luscious Johnny with the Dream Team, and and, and to see uh, Jimmy Hart and right. Bobby right. Heenan and 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 all those all those legends that that manage people and Freddie Blassie and the list Where goes on Mr Mr Fuji those those were so much a part of the program those were so much a part of the wrestling show the card in any city that I I really don't understand why they don't have more of them or why they just totally got away from them Right, you had Jimmy Hart. Tell us about him uh, working with him. Uh, as you know, J- Jimmy, Jimmy and I, the thing about a manager is this. You can be put with someone. I could have probably been put with Freddie Blassie, and the gears the gears might not have worked. Freddie's a great guy and could have done everything, but he was not that energetic, musical guy. And Mr. Fuji, same way, he was fabulous for, for what he did with the guys he was with. And... You know, Captain Lou, maybe, and I, we could have worked and the gears would have clicked. But as, as I tell people, it's, it's like driving the old stick shift car. When you got her, when you got the gears and they're working great, baby, you're on a roll. And Jimmy and I, uh, we clicked, and we clicked very well for a long time. And we can still do it. We can still go out there and never say a word, never do anything, but the gears will click. And that's a hard combination to find. It's very much like tag team wrestling. A combination of a razzmatazz, showbiz guy, and then some bully wrestler that's a tag team partner. There has to be a contrast, and managers have to contrast with the the, the fellow they're managing. No question, and we were talking about managers as a lost start. Tag teams is now also a lost start. Back in your day, it was Rhythm and Blues, the Bushwhackers, Demolition, Powers of Pain. I could go on and on. What do you think of the lack of tag teams? Well, it's it's the same thing I, I said uh, uh, about the uh, about the managers. I, I don't know where the tag teams were lost. I don't know where they or who made the decision that these things aren't interesting anymore. And I think tag teams are. They're a fabulous part of the card because you have four people in there and a, and a referee. And if you add a manager, then you're adding all these people. It's like at the end of the thing, when it's all ready to be over, I, I equate it to Orville Redenbacher popcorn. I mean, you got bodies flying, you got people doing all this stuff, and uh, you know it's exciting for the fans. And I, and I grew up in tag. I grew up in tag teams. And when I first started, I spent ten years being a tag guy. And 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 I was telling the fellows down in uh, Mobile and Pensacola on the weekend. For the first ten years, I was in tag teams, and I was. I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I understand and I know how to work in a tag team. Then all of a sudden, I went to Calgary, and now I'm a singles. And I did not. I mean, every now and again, I would look over at the corner, and I didn't have a partner. I, I it was nice. difficult transition for me to go from tags to singles. And then, and, uh, but I, I did it, but I still, I can still, when I watch tag teams now on the independents, they are horrible. They are absolutely horrible. They do not even know how to do a tag team match. Wow. Who do you think was your favorite uh, partner? Oh, gosh. Was it Greg so many... Valentine? Uh, I, no, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to tell you why. Because... Greg would have been, I mean, the, the, the contrast with me being the flamboyant, uh, sparkly guy that got in and did all the boogie-woogie, uh, you know, I, I was a show business guy, the guitar player, the singer, and Greg was the wrestler. It's a fabulous contrast. But Greg did not like having the black hair, so he did not, he did not put the effort in it. And if you ask him now, Blackjack, I swear to you, if you ask him now, 
if you had it to do over with again, would you have put more effort into rhythm and blues? And he would say, yes, I made a mistake. I should have done this because it was it was it was a good tag team. It was a good contrast to tag teams. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the best partners, I mean, I had David Schultz as a partner for a long time. I had handsome Jimmy Valiant uh, as a partner. But I mind you, I was a young kid with Jimmy Valiant. And so, you know, I was a kid that got in, took all the bumps, did everything, got the got the crap beat out of me. And then Valiant stood on the apron, ha cha cha cha, ha cha cha cha, yeah, baby, ha cha cha cha. But uh, <laughs> I remember that he was well. <laughs> He he was a good cheerleader, you know. And so, but I, I learned a lot being with him. And, and then with David Schultz, I mean, there was a good contrast with us. I would have to say, and most people wouldn't wouldn't know it until they watch some old Stampede tapes. The best tag team partner that I ever had was a, a young fellow, a fellow named Ron Starr, who at one time was a junior heavyweight champion. He won the belt from Nel, uh, Nelson Royal, and then when he came to uh, Calgary, Stu, after David Schultz left, Stu and put him with me, and Ron Starr was a, a, a fabulous, fabulous interviewer, uh, tremendous worker in the ring, just, uh, I mean, the, the gears with Ron and I clicked. Okay, uh, JJ, let's go over to you. Now, as we mentioned, uh, you've been a very uh, entertaining character over the years as a tag team or in singles. But uh, with the WWE, you were also very briefly a commentator and then going and becoming Billy Gunn's manager. Uh, what was it like as a manager and then being a commentator? Well, the, the commentating thing, I would, I, I mean, I would really like to, I'm, I, now, now I'm going to pander a little bit like uh, everyone else. I would love to do commentating again, and I, I, I think I did good at it. Uh, yes, I was you not did. the best. I was not the best by any means, but if I had if I was given more time to do it and 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 less distractions when I was doing it, uh, you know, I, the first time I did commentary, I was sitting beside Daffy Duck. Now da- I call him Daffy Duck. That's <laughs> Roddy Piper. I mean, you can't get this guy to shut up. <laughs> so it's 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 real hard to get a word in edgewise. So and and at that point, I was still fresh in the wrestling business and just coming off of losing the Ultimate Warrior. I didn't want to be a commentator, so there again, I mean, that the negative side of me, I did not put my best effort forward, and it didn't work for me. And then when I came back and did some commentary for WWE during the Billy Gunn setup thing, I yeah. think I was I was okay at it, but I knew that I was not going to do it forever, so there again, I didn't put the tremendous effort behind it because I was not pandering or looking for that job mm. and then the billy gun thing just went on and on and on it was like can we ever find the next greatest intercontinental champion it went on for like three four five months it was horrible to wait and wait and wait and then it was terrible for billy he didn't want to do it and and he was very much like greg uh you know it was something that and that not only that and Jimmy Hart will say this. My character, the Honky Tonk Man, with all the flashy stuff, the song, the music, the guitar, and the razzmatazz, my character standing outside the ring while Billy was in there trying to work and get himself over as, you know, the next greatest thing was extremely difficult because people were looking at me and not at him. And it was a terrible spot for it was a terrible spot for him to be in. It was horrible, and it it, it, it and consequently, folks, it did not work. Say it, say it, Black Jack. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> uh, Honky, when you look back, what would you say, man, was your personal favorite match of a guy that you maybe worked with? Is there one that sticks out more than any? Well, you know, of course, winning the Intercontinental Championship from Ricky uh, Steamboat was the one that catapulted me from mid-card, lower card, up to main event status. Uh, you know, I I have to say, I, I had great matches with Jake, and I had uh, it was a good little run with Jake when when I mean, obviously, and, I, and it's on. I'm on the record saying it. Jake went to rehab so many times that I had substitute. People think I. I 
I didn't win any matches. When someone quits like Ricky did, then you have a substitute. The substitute wins every night. When Jake had to leave and go away, someone had to be the substitute. And they said, it's a non-title match. So I was losing night after night after night, every town I went in, losing, losing, losing. The only thing I could do was go on TV and say, look, Mean Gene, I still have it. I still have the belt. But, I mean, those were difficult times to go through. Uh I had, uh, I think my best piece of work probably was with uh, Macho Man. Now, and, and, and I had some good work uh, with Beefcake, a short run. And I had some good stuff underneath building Jimmy Snooker back to get him ready for uh, for uh, Kurt Henning. And, but I think my best piece of work was with Macho Man. Yes, and uh, you were uh, on Saturday Night's Main Event. You were very high profile when you wrestled uh, Macho Man uh, over that time. Yeah, and you know, someone brought it to my attention not so long ago. They said, you know, you guys, the Hearts came in and they held him. You hit him with the guitar. She goes against Hogan. He comes in. Did you guys ever have any tag matches, six man tag matches? And I went, you know, no, we didn't. Nothing. <laughs> I was never in the six man or anything with the hearts against Macho and, 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 and anybody. I mean, it was like normally if some guy runs in and then, you know, they do yeah. that, then we're coming back in the six man. We're, we're in a six man. Yeah. Uh, no, we never, none of us, me, Brett, or Jim, let me say it there, Brett, Jim, and I, to be uh, grammatically correct, uh, but. Anyway, we never had any tag matches with Hogan or Savage, nothing. The Hearts didn't have tag matches. No, none of us went on to wrestle the Mega Powers. None of us. That's the same. Yeah. Some, some fan brought that to my attention. The fan, see, and the fans are extremely, extremely smart. Yes. Say it, Blackjack. Come oh, on, yes. man. Come on, man. It is the truth. Look at JJ. Look what we got here. This guy... He used to be, he still is what I used to be in, in me, uh, remembering stuff. JJ is great. The king is great with the information, you know? You know, and, and that's that's what I respect about a lot of people, and especially there's one fellow, and I've never had a chance to sit down with him because we've not been together. And I mean, we were together briefly in WWE, but he was very busy doing office stuff. Jimmy Cornette. Jimmy Cornette is a historian. Yes. Jimmy Cornette has been a fan since he was a child. Jimmy yes. Cornette can tell you who wrestled who in 1975, how much the the gates were, how, how much. Uh, Jimmy Cornette is, is, and I say this about him, he is what everyone should be that's part of this wrestling business. If you're going to be in it, be a student. Now, be a student means knowing everything all the time. But by the same token, then you get to the point where you set your standards so high compared to the ones that don't practice, you know, history that you say, you know, you just can't deal with them. And I, sometimes I'm that way. I went back to WWE for a short time, not the last time I was there in March uh, of last year, but I was back there doing the Santino Morella thing. And there was yes. all those all those divas backstage. Yeah. Natty Natty Nyhart knew who I was. Gail yeah. Kim, and and Beth Phoenix. I mean, it's uh, like you got you got twenty five girls back here, and they don't even know who this guy is with black hair and sideburns. Oh. Uh, I mean, you know, come on, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on, man. But, you know, Vince told, Vince, 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 Vince told me a long time ago, he said, hey, business has changed. They don't have to pay their dues anymore. Business has changed. And he is right. The business has changed. Yeah. They don't yeah, sit down. You know what they should make them do down in Orlando or wherever they do that NXT stuff? Mm-hmm. Or wherever the wherever the training center? Oh, they, should set, they should make them attend class just like in college. And one of the classes would be wrestling history. Yeah. And they would have to know and learn everyone's names and take a test and a quiz after the end of three months. They should also (laughs) have a free subscription to that um, network. Yeah. Uh, Well, 
No, Vince's not going to give any way, anything away free, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, guys, yeah. let me one more question for Blackjack, because I know he has a million questions. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is mm-hmm. the Hunky Talk Man doing today? As far as just oh. making the appearances, are you going to get back in the ring like the New Age Outlaws? No, 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 no. We, we, you know, when it comes to New York, uh, they give you a physical before you work in New York. And uh, someone said, the, uh, I was reading something about Hogan. They said, yes, the WWE gave him a physical. He didn't pass. Well, yeah. come on, man. The guy's had eight back surgeries, both knees, both hips. Come on, man. He ain't going to pass a physical. Forget about it. Right. And then Piper's going, yes, I want a match. I want a match with Hogan at WrestleMania. Come on, yeah. Piper. You, yeah. Listen. Look, when you when you have when you are when you are are, are a publicly traded company, you can't just put guys in the ring. It's it's a liability. And and you know us guys over any anybody over fifty fifty five years old, we are we are a liability when it comes to a big company. Sure, I can go out on an independent show, and I worked on an independent show Saturday night in Mobile, Alabama. Greg Valentine, Brutus Beefcake, the Dream Team, and and Rhythm and Blues was reunited, and Bullet Bob Armstrong was in the match, and 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 74 years old Bullet Bob was there. I mean, you can't WWE can't do that. Let's come on, man. You know who would want to still do that? Ric Flair. Isn't that oh, amazing? Come, come on, yeah, man. Me, come on, man. You got the head uh, leader on that one. Oh, he, Rick can't he can't pass it physical either. Come, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there's nothing. Listen, we all I love this business as much as anybody, and I. If Vince asked me to go back in the ring, could I do it? Of course I could, but I mean, what would you I'm do? Not, it? Oh, would you do it? Well, of course I would. Why not? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a lean mean singing machine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm and a song course. and dance man. Blackjack, if I can sing the song, shake my hips a little bit. Now, like the shake, rattle, and roll, I do a lot of shaking. That's I don't all you do need to do. Much... That's, that's right, but I don't do. That's it. You still got your hair, right? <laughs> that's it, baby. I st- you know, honky talk man will never die. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're going to have so much fun in New York uh, coming up March 8th. And it's going to be fabulous, and to, to sit there and be with those guys and and see them again is is uh, you know I don't I I, I want to talk to the fans I want to I want I want to talk to the fans as much as I can, but I still want to find out what King Kong Bundy said. Every time I open my mouth, I'm telling a lie. <laughs> is I, that's, that that's, that's, I don't know where I don't know where where King Kong Bundy got that from. I think he was talking about Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> gotta confront him. Come on, man. Come on, man. You got a confrontation on that one. <laughs> Listen, if a if a wrestler is talking, he's probably lying. You never know. Uh, off you on a serious <laughs> note, what was your take when you found out about the whole Chris Benoit situation? Uh, it was uh, it, I was really I was shocked because I helped break Chris in. Ron Starr and I did in Calgary. Uh, when we were the tag team, and Chris was, uh, the two fellows broke him in in Edmonton that I knew because their their father in Edmonton was partners with Stu and played football with Stu with the uh, Edmonton Eskimos, and 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 they broke Chris in and then sent him down, and then Chris and uh, Benoit, uh, one of the other fellows that married one of the Hart daughters, uh, the Benoit boy and and and. No, Chris was the Benoit. Uh, oh, jeez. Anyway, Chris came down and was tag team with one of the fellows who married one of the daughters, Bazarath. Now I got it. Ben Bazarath and Chris Benoit. They were the ta- they were a little young tag team that was put with myself and Ron Starr. So we kind right. of guided them along and helped them. And and I was with Chris very briefly in WCW, which was extremely briefly. And then for a short time with the Billy Gunn thing in w, WWF, uh, it Chris to me was a shy, humble guy that loved the wrestling business, and he was another historian. He would do anything for the business. And when I found out how all this happened, it was way beyond the realm of anything that I knew about him. 
And, uh, you know, we never know what sets someone off in their personal life, in, in their private life. We, we, we will never know. Uh, and it, it's, it's so sad. It's, it's so, so sad. Honky, personally, I don't think he did it. Uh, uh I, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just a strange, strange events and it's terrible, terrible. I mean, we don't know what happens behind closed doors anywhere. We all think we do. We all want to think we do, but we really don't. Do you think he should be recognized in the uh, Hall of Fame? Of course. Why not? I mean, it's like saying, listen, I, I, I think it's common knowledge that O.J. had something to do with the murders of two people, but you can't yes. take away, and it's the same, it's same as Pete Rose. You, even though Pete Rose would gamble, well, gosh, you can't take away the guy that O.J. played football or Pete played baseball and set all these records, and you can't take away uh, the fact that Chris, uh, that Chris was a wrestler because he did something that was outside of what uh, is normal in human behavior. But you can't take, you can't wash away their records. You can't wash away the fact that they were there. Well, Vince is attempting to wash it away because uh, it's not even in the WWE Network uh, as much as, you know, you can't really access it unless you really, really try hard. Uh, okay, so not, what about... Okay, let me ask you this. What about a guy that kills himself snorting up a whole bunch of cocaine? Should he well, should the, he should he be there? What about a guy that gets drunk on a highway and kills a whole family or something? Should he be in the Hall of Fame? What I mean, come on, man. Someone would say you, you, though he took the ten year old child's life away. You know, that's the issue. It had we nothing do to do with it had it had nothing to do with his records or his wrestling career. It had nothing to do with, with that. I agree with that. I mean, you, you you just can't wipe out Barry Bonds' records. You can't wipe out you can't wipe out the the records of of of, of, of these guys. You can say, well, because they cheated or because they did this, they didn't ever exist. They had a life before this happened. That's true. That's true. Very I, I, mean, that's, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, that's my feeling on it. My feeling is, listen, we all do bad. We all have bad behavior, but you can't just say the guy never lived. He never existed. No. No. And to me, no. to me, that, that's that's the wrong. No, I'm not saying you reward. You're not rewarding their bad behavior. You're, you're just rewarding acknowledging what, what he's done in the past and during his career. Right. You're acknowledging what they accomplished in their career, not what they, not anything else. You know, it, it's a sad, sad thing. Are you yeah. saying, well, a guy can't, he can't be in a Hall of Fame because uh, of, of something that happened on the playground when he was 10 years old? Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get serious about it, but I, I really, I mean, I have my own opinion. Opinions are like our, are, are, are posterior. We all have one to sit on. Exactly. And nothing you can to take away uh, his ability and the memories at WrestleMania 20 when he first won the title and he hugged uh, Eddie Guerrero in the middle of the ring. No one will ever forget that, no matter what. Well, I mean, there's always been mysterious deaths uh, around athletes and entertainers and uh you know, and wrestlers, and but then some get, you know, some get promoted to the highest levels uh, because of they did bad behavior and died in some hotel room somewhere with mysterious uh, heart failure. Whereas another guy does something and uh, they're exiled to uh, purgatory forever. Hundred percent. We'll let you go in a few more minutes. Just a few more questions for Honky JJ. <laughs> Yeah, but you mentioned you uh, inducted Coco Beware into the Hall of Fame in 2009. Uh, what was it like to be a part of the Hall of Fame? Did you enjoy, you know, reminiscing with, uh, you know, the camaraderie with the superstars? And uh, have you been to any Hall of Fame since then? No, I have not been back since then for any Hall of Fame. And uh, it was great. It was fantastic. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. And, uh, uh, 
you know, I, I understood, and, and this is something that, that, that I, I think a lot of fans, and especially some young aspiring wrestlers, even the guys that's in the business now, uh, and it's, it, it's something that The Rock would say. It's one of his taglines. Know your role, which means know your position. Know where you are on the card. Know what you're supposed to do. And I knew my role going in to Coco. And, and it was not my night by any means, and I did not try by any means to overshadow or take away his spotlight. And I know that some people who introduct, who in, introduct or induct some people in different things, whether it be the Hall of Fame or whether it be the Grammys or whether it be anywhere, sometimes the inductor tries to be the star. Mm. And... I, I knew my position, and my position was, this is Co- this is Coco's night, and I'm not going to take away from it. Yeah. And I said all those things about Coco that made him a big, big star to everyone, and it was all true. I didn't have to make anything up. Absolutely, no question. And, uh, Honky, when you look back to your era, we talk about managers, tag teams, in, in fact, in fact, let, in fact, let me give you just a tad bit of inside information. I yes. went to Coco, and I and I went to Coco before I went out, and I sat down with him that afternoon, and I told him exactly what I was going to say because I wanted him to be comfortable, in the fact that I was going to say this, and I told him exactly like I told you guys. I said it's your night, Coco. It's not my night. My night will come someday, somewhere at another place, another time, but tonight. Here's what I'm going to say. And I, I, I said it all to him. I didn't read it. It was in my mind. And I said, will this work for you? And he said, yeah, man, that's great. And he told, he said, I appreciate it. And I went out there, and I delivered it just that way. Wow, that's cool. That, that, that's amazing. And uh, I, I think you should definitely be, uh, you know, I'm shooting here. You should definitely be in the Honky Tonk. Uh, Honky Tonk Man should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, it, it's definitely it's, coming. Are you kidding? Me? Oh, Blackjack! Come on, man! Oh, come on, man! No, you know it's like I said. Another, another place. Another, another place. Another time, and uh, uh, it's not something that you sit around and you, you know, you a dog after a bone, and you're yap yap yap, and you want it so bad. Look, hey, man. Hey, come on, man! I've gone this long. Who cares? You know it's gonna happen. Well. It's not my call. Not yet. And, and you be. know what? If it, if, if it, it was my call, call, if it was my call, I would say take someone else. Right. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Because, and here's why. And I'm, I, here's here's why I would say that. There are so many, so many men and women, boys and girls. I'll say boys and girls because we call them boys and call them girls. There's so many boys and girls mm-hmm. out there that are so much more deserving for that than I am. Oh, well, that's real so many, So, so many more, so many more. And, and, and if I was asked to pick someone, I would, I, you know, I would not even want that chore. I would not even want it because there's so many that all need to be there. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, Billy Silverman, uh, posted on Twitter that he thinks Leilani Kai should be in. Uh, gosh. Uh, I'm, well, see, there again, you're putting me in a bad spot, but of course, by all means. Uh, I'm, come on, man. There's, it's like <laughs> I said, there's, there's, you, you can only put so many per year, and it's, t- it's too bad you can't say, listen, we're going to put 100 people in. Uh, and But that's, that's, that's the pecking order. That's the nature of the business, and uh, it's the life. You know what? I tell my wife when I have a bad booking, like I spent six hours in Houston the other day, and the flight got canceled, and, and then I, drew, I flew to New Orleans and drove six hours to Pensacola. It's the life I chose. That's it's the uh, life I chose. Back in 88, uh, Honky, when you were told that this was going to be the plan and Warrior was going to Watch you and uh, 
how, how did that well, make now, you feel? Now, 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 wait a minute. Now, now wait a minute. Said you, uh, I was not told I was going to be squashed. That was my idea. Really? Oh, really? Okay. Yes, that was my idea. Oh, okay. that was all. That was that whole match was all mine. I mean, I was given creative control over that, and and uh, I thought I I thought I did pretty good at it. Yeah, absolutely. Did he thank well, you, was, Jim? You know. Oh yes, yes, yes. Jim's a fabulous guy. Well, I can't say Jim. His name's Warrior, but Warrior's a fabulous guy, and you know, misunderstood in a lot of respects, and you know, rough, tough businessman, which he should be. He's dealing with rough, tough people. It's also rough, tough businessman. Right. Uh, you know, you can't get any rougher and tougher than Vance. He's a tough businessman, and so you have to have been and the Warrior learned to deal with him that way, and and that's a good thing. Uh, there's other people that dealt with Vince on a rough, tough business level. Obviously, Hogan has. That's why he's back. And yeah. and then and, and Stone Cold, and the list goes on and on. The Rock. I mean, The Rock had came yeah. back for WrestleMania. And, come on. I mean, Bruno. Oh yeah. So uh, you know, it's all give and take. But no, I mean, when when I was informed about what was what the what the plans were, and because of because of these plans, what what premeditated and what created these plans uh hogan wanted to go to hollywood and leaving and the company's going to be left with no one and they were scrambling for someone and uh events i i i'm gonna go i'm gonna go on record because i haven't had a chance to say this in a lot of venues because i this is the first podcast i've done since may of last year with uh Cole cabana because i i totally stopped doing them oh very uh, cool i, I just People totally stopped doing them. Did you go I have not done. Or? I I have not even done my own podcast and Cole Cabana's. <laughs> I said I said I'll do yours, but uh, after that I did no more. I did. I have not done any. This is the first one. But I will go oh. on record saying, and 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 I'm not I'm not trying to blow smoke or pander or do any of those things. Vince, you know, everyone says Vince is a genius. Oh, Vince McMahon. Vince not a genius. No, he's not. He's not even near that probably mental capacity. But he, Vince, Vince is a man of vision. There's a difference. He is a man of vision. He sees things that you and I and anyone else, we don't see. He is a visionary. He takes something, he takes something out of a picture. He takes something out of a match. He takes something out of a person. He takes something out of someone that's walking down the street, and he is a he sees things we don't see. That's a visionary. He's a man of vision. Yeah. It's not it's not genius what he does. He has a vision, and we all scratch our head and say, "Come on, man!" Do you remember the first person? Blackjack, Blackjack, Blackjack. Let me ask you, Blackjack. How many times you scratched your head and went, "Come on, man! I can't believe they're doing this." Uh, a lot, a million, a million, a million times. A, a lot, a lot. But guess what? But I I seen Vince McMahon do the honky tonk man before the honky tonk man even did it. Do you remember that? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That it, he is that type of he he is that character. Whatever character that he sees in you, he can make that character in himself. I saw him do a George Steele better than George Steele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, it's amazing. I mean, he, he, it's not genius at all by any means. It's a vision. And and people who have have accomplished great things in life have a vision. And, and um, I'm, I mentioned I'm, I mentioned earlier Bill Gates. If you ask Bill Gates... Listen, you were a college dropout. How did you create all this? He'd say, I don't know. But he had a vision. And, yeah. and Vince, is that, Vince is that type of person. He can see a guy walking down the street and say, that's a character. And he yeah. can put that character on someone and mm -hmm. make it work. Yeah. Now, has he, had, has, he, has he had failures? Of course he has. Yeah. But his success far, far outweighs his failures. Yeah. A lot of people think Paul Heyman has that uh, savvy about what you're talking about, but was just horrible with money. What's your thoughts on, on uh, Paul Heyman? 
You know, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest. I was never around Paul. I've met him t- probably maybe twice uh, in WWE. Other than that, I, I think we, we've said hello. I met him once and introduced ourselves, and then I didn't see him again until I was back doing – he wasn't even there when I was doing the Santino Morello thing, and then I saw him last year, and we briefly said hello uh, he never used me in ECW, and I, I never watched their product uh, to any extent other than being in Boston one night and, with, and working for Killer Kowalski and and, and uh, saw it at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Boston station, and I saw Rick Root slapping this girl over the backside. Uh, <laughs> so, and it was funny as hell to see because I know Rick Root, and I think I, I forget what that girl's name was. Uh, she was a girl manager or something. Yeah, well, anyway, I, I think, it, I think it, it Paul, was, in my opinion, I think Paul comes pretty close to uh, to that, as you were saying about Vince, believe it or not. He took that DCW and wrestlers to an extreme on his own right, in my opinion. You know, and and I, I was around, and I have to say this about not Jeff Jarrett, because I, I wasn't around Jeff, and I don't know uh, anything about Jeff at all, but I was around Jeff's father, Jerry Jarrett, and yeah. Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Jarrett was a visionary. Like he this. he was he he. There are certain people who have that. You know, they have that ability to. They see something that we don't see, and we scratch our head, going, "Are you kidding me?" When he said, "Listen, I'm going to take this guy, this this Ultimate Warrior, and I'm going," I went, and I told Vince, I looked at him, I said, "Come on, man." <laughs> But he says, no. He said, I really think I can make this happen. And I said, well, good luck, man. Good luck. And you know what? He made it happen. Yeah. yeah. And and it did. And it was something that I, I think, And that, you know what? And I'll say this. I, I'm a poor judge of characters. I, I That's why I'm not a booker and I'm not a promoter. The first time The Undertaker came out, and it was a Survivor Series, I think, on a Thanksgiving in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. They said, we got this guy, and he's going to do this and put people in a body bag. Call him Undertaker. <laughs> yep. I, I said, this will never work. Are you kidding me? Put somebody in a body bag, they're going to boo everybody. They're going to boo him out of the building. Well, he's been there for almost 30 years. So <laughs> 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 I, see, and that's why, that's, that's why I'm, I'm not good at judging people at all, and that's why I keep my... Judgments uh, out of the I, 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 shit. I'm I'm horrible at it. Let's go for a final question with JJ. Well, you know, with the launch of the WWE Network, it seems that recently when they have pay per views and such, they bring some legends back uh, during a legends panel and they have them uh, talk about the pay per view. Would you be open to something like that? coming in and maybe as a commentator or just, you know, analyzing the, a match or something for that nature? Well, with the nostalgia contract that I'm on, I, I'm pretty much for the next, well, I had five years and uh, one year's gone now. So for the next four years, I'm pretty much uh, at, at 24-7 call for WWE. Oh. And uh, uh, that's how it is. And uh, if they call me to do something, I'm more more than willing, happy, and able to go do it and uh, take it from there. But uh, until until that phone call comes... Listen, I don't sit around my house waiting on the 203 area code to pop up on my phone. Hockey will be in New Orleans this year from uh, WrestleMania. I will be there for WrestleCon on a Saturday. Okay. Uh, I'm there. I'll be there with, uh, of all people, Daffy Duck, Roddy Piper. I don't know how Roddy and I are going to get along together. I, hopefully he won't be there the same time I'm there because, I, you know, I love Roddy to death, but I, I think he doesn't even remember that I was ever in the wrestling business. But uh, besides besides that, Psycho Sid will be there, and I hope I'm there with Sid because, I, I you know, Sid's one of the guys who came up to me when he was world champion, and, and I was back doing the Billy Gunn thing, I think it was maybe, or something, and, or they brought me back for something, and, and Sid came up and he says, man, he was so humble and so, uh, you know, I've watched you, and he was he was just so nice about everything. And, and from then on, Sid and I have been, uh, you know, on really good terms, and I think he's a great guy. 
Well, uh, Honky, we thank you for joining us. Uh, there are some websites that you have, right? Well, we yeah, have the honkytalkman.net. I don't do a whole lot on it anymore. And we were going to start our radio show back on uh, tomorrow night. But uh, uh, Steve, my webmaster, we were going to do the Shake, Rattle, and Rolls, kick it off tomorrow night after a year's absence. And uh, he's had some uh, uh, things that he had to attend to, so we've had to postpone it. But uh, the fans look forward to March 8th when the Honky Tonk Man rolls back into New York. All right. And uh, are you on Twitter? Oh, yes, official official HTM. Official, that's you. Okay. Are you on Facebook? That's me. For the record. Fa- Facebook is, oh, uh, jeez, what is that one? That's no, Honky Tonk Man, I think. Oh, okay, wow. and if, if promoters are listening, which they are, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, who should they oh, email? Hey, go on Wikipedia. You can find out everything. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's right. Listen, I went on, I, I'm going on Wiki. I'm going on Wikipedia in just a few minutes. I'm going to look at old pictures of Black Jack Brown. <laughs> Come on, man! Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. Come on, man! Oh, come on, man! All right, hey fellas, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I've enjoyed it. Black Jack, God bless you, brother. Same to you. I hope to see you soon mm-hmm. down the road. I hope so, man. Day. It's been so long. Yes. Intercontinental champion of all time, baby. We'll see it's you amazing. on March 8th. Thank you, Honky. Thank you, guys. Good night. Have a good okay, night. Okay, Honky. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, that was the Honky Talk there. The uh, Blackjack, uh, what's your thoughts? Oh, I got to some history with that man there. He definitely was a great person to, to be around and they hang out with, as you can see there, uh, one of my oldest friends in the wrestling world and uh, uh, one of the best. Walk back a lot of memories. It still is. And, J.J., uh, what's your take? Oh, man, I mean, it was just a, a huge honor as someone who, uh, just as a fan of wrestling, you know, I grew up watching him in, you know, the 80s and the 90s. And to be able to have a one-on-one conversation with him is just, you know, any fan's dream. You know, I was a big fan of his character. I thought he was very entertaining. And uh, it was just really great. And I didn't get the opportunity to say, but I told you this, uh, King, uh, privately, that actually this past Christmas, believe it or not, my cousins sent me a Honky Tonk Man action figure from Mattel, one of the new... Uh, you know, wrestling toys by the WWE. They have, you know, since Honky Tonk, Honky Tonk Man is a part of their like, sort of legends uh, deal, you know, they released an action figure of him. And just just by coincidence, you know, this past Christmas, they sent me a Honky Tonk Man uh, figure. So that was just uh, very cool. So to be able to actually talk to the guy, the man, the Honky Tonk Man, it's just, you know, there's no words to describe it. It was, you know, a complete honor. And I was uh, happy to be a part of this with uh, you and Blackjack and K- and uh, Honky Tonk Man. I mean, I'm just speechless. Yeah, I mean, the, earlier I spoke to you, and I didn't know for sure because it was 50-50, and I wrote you a little bit earlier that he, it was still 50-50. So you'll see that when you get on your email. But uh, let me just plug the show. Uh, it is on March the 8th of this year at the Marriott Courtyard. 9010 Ditmars Boulevard, East Elmhurst, New York, from 10 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. The show is only 10 bucks. Uh, all right, here's some of the guys you're going to see AJ Styles, Dennis Rodman, The King, Harley Race, King Kong Bundy, Buff Bagwell, Jimmy Hart. Honky Talk Man, who you just heard from. Yes. Bodyguard Virgil, the little boogeyman, and the boogeyman, and Greg the Hammer Valentine, and much, much more uh, names will be uh, coming down uh, as we uh, speak. Uh, hop on to them, uh, bigevent.com. Uh, once you're there, you could go to their Facebook. Uh, and their Twitter handle, 
So uh, definitely looks like it's going to be a great show. Uh, soon we should have uh, Jimmy the Mouth of the South Heart. That should be the next big guest, uh, wow. along with uh, possibly uh, Dennis Rodman. That's a, that's a 50-50, I want to say, at this, this point. But uh, hopefully uh, we will have Mr. Uh, Dennis Rodman. But uh, just before, just in closing, um, uh, we were talking about Raw. We were talking. So, uh, what do you expect, uh, JJ, uh, for the uh, next for Monday's Raw? In closing, well, you know, they. They mentioned uh, that Batista will have a promo that you will be able to see on SmackDown. He's going to have a one-on-one with the fans, and he's going to address, you know, that uh, they've been booing him and things like that. So I can't help but wonder if whether or not they actually turn uh, Batista heel. Could we see Batista turn heel with the fans, you know, just booing him, uh, berating him? You know, every week, every week, you know, how could you ignore that? I mean, to have the guy as a face and to be constantly booed, they get away with with John Cena because John Cena has, you know, the fans. He's got the little kids. He's got a lot of the girls. They love him and things like that. But Batista doesn't even have that. You know, the little kids aren't really cheering him. So uh, it would be interesting to me whether or not we see Batista turn heel uh, by the time WrestleMania rolls up or on WrestleMania, and then he could be potentially the big heel champion, and maybe, just maybe, Daniel Bryan could be chasing him in the future. Well, we definitely uh, will see for that. Uh, we're going to have we're gonna do our WrestleMania moment in just a second, so think about that. Um, but uh, as I was saying, I do want to... Uh, fans to uh, tune in on Thursday. We will be talking, uh, I don't know which defense attorney I will have on, at 9 o'clock on the East, I'll have somebody to be talking about Raymond Felton's troubles, uh, the Arizona situation uh, that's going on right now, and a lot, a lot much, uh, more uh, in terms of that. And if you want to hear the replay, of course, you could just wait uh, 20 minutes after the program and just uh, uh, you could uh, hear it again on replay. Also, uh, King Jordan Radio, facebook.com forward slash King Jordan Radio, or on Twitter at Mr. King Jordan. And uh, the website is www.kingjordansportsandmedia.com. And now it's time for our WrestleMania moment. And it's going to start with me. Okay. Let's go back to 1990, since we mentioned it earlier. In one corner was the immortal Hulk Hogan. In the other corner was the ultimate warrior, For the first time in WWE history, it was title for title, as in a classic match. People say they had their worst match together, and that was their best match together. It was Hulk Hogan losing to the Ultimate Warrior in a stunned crowd at WrestleMania VI. Just totally, uh, totally uh, unsuspected. At that time, and I heard there were a lot of changes, and Blackjack, you were there. And uh, Blackjack, let's go to you for your WrestleMania moment as we get, uh, we are only uh, about five weeks away or six weeks away. I tell you, it's really hard to group anything like this. It really is, bro. Even as we get closer, I'm just looking to the. Well, think about the WrestleManias that you were at. <laughs> you pick one from there. Uh, at a WrestleMania 29, uh, they're hard. <laughs> they, they really are, man. All right, so just pick one, Blackjack. How you can about pick one. Shawn Michaels against Brett? How's that? 
I was right there. Yeah. Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. That was yeah, a one-hour Iron Man match uh, where it went to overtime. Yeah, that, that stands out to mind. That was a phenomenal match, and that was the day the Ultimate Warrior returned to to the ring and beat Triple H in 33 seconds. Unbelievable. That would never happen now or in a million years. And finally, our Wrestling Insider, let's go to you for your WrestleMania moment as we are, what, let's see, how many weeks away are we? Uh, about five, six weeks away. That's to awesome. uh, WrestleMania. JJ, yeah, just about what is your WrestleMania moment this week? Well, you know, before I mentioned Bret Hart, I mentioned CM Punk. This time I got to go with another one of my boys, uh, Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 19, taking on uh, his boyhood idol, Shawn Michaels. It's very rare to have someone who grew up watching another wrestler and to who idolized him. If you look at a lot of uh, Chris Jericho earlier in his career, he was very flamboyant, much like Sean was. You know, he did some of the similar moves that uh, Sean did, the elbow off the top rope. You know, he was uh, one of those guys who always did the over-the-top rope, whether he was flying or doing a suicide dive. You know, he really modeled a lot of uh, the stuff that he did after, you know, Shawn Michaels. And uh, to have that match where someone who grew up watching him for years idolized him, and then all of a sudden you have this match, and it's at WrestleMania. It was such a big match for uh, Jericho, and these guys tore the house down. I thought, you know, by far it was one of the the best uh, matches on the card, which is tough because I think uh, WrestleMania 19 was also Rock and Austin. So uh, it was hard to top that, but uh, Jericho... And uh, Shawn Michaels, Y2J, and HBK, it was just an instant classic. Just a real yeah. great technical matchup. Yeah, you're 100% right. You hit it on the head. That was uh, 19. That was also the one where Hogan took on Vince that year. That's uh, right, yeah. Street very right, good yeah. one. Okay, we will be back Tuesday night, 8 p.m., uh, Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and uh, 5 p.m. West Coast Time. I want to thank Blackjack Brown, Chicago Sun. Okay, and thank I want you. To... JJ, thank you. Yeah, same here, Blackjack. Come on, He's man. He's cool. He's cocky. Come He's on, bad. man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> honky. I want to thank the Honky Talk, man. And, of course, I want to thank you, JJ. Uh, yes, yeah, some phenomenal questions to Mr. Honky Tonk, man. My pleasure, man. It was a great honor. Okay, guys, we will see you next week and uh, look forward to uh, the WWE Network, SmackDown, Raw, and uh, we'll recap it next week here. Thanks a lot, JJ and Blackjack. Hey, take it easy, guys. Take care. Okay.